What isn't so far off at the moment is the plan to take some of what we've been learning in quantum biology and apply it to the world of quantum sensors and quantum technology, and then hopefully the emerging field of quantum medicine. Does that sound about right? First, let me put the quantum sensing community in context for uh, things like quantum computing. So in quantum okay. computing, you need large arrays of qubits that are talking to one another and are completely isolated from their environment. Otherwise, the system simply isn't going to work. In quantum sensing, it's rather different. You need one qubit and you learn from its coupling to the environment. So we are a much nearer term technology than a quantum computer. We, we use, I, I like to say, we use the garbage pail of quantum computing, the qubit that doesn't work because it couples to its environment. We pick up as a tool, you know, okay. one man's trash is another man's treasure. We pick this up as a tool and we use it precisely because it couples to its environment so it can teach me something about the environment. And so, you know, we are going to learn about some fundamental processes in biology. This will allow us to understand how drugs are working, how drugs are partitioning around the cell, how uh, cancer is growing and moving. And so the first things you'll probably see coming out of this technology are not necessarily tools where you go to your doctor and you, the doctor who's practicing medicine is using quantum technology sort of on you, but, but rather you're going to find that the drugs seem to get a little bit better. The, Got the, it pipeline to uh, creating a drug and understanding its mechanism of action and getting it through FDA approval may become a little bit faster. And so what you'll see in the beginning is that these tools are used in the laboratory to give us more certainty in what we're developing and more ways to see how a drug is working and how it is not working, what might be the source of a side effect. And so you'll see it roll out in the laboratory first, and you may even be blind to how your drug was discovered or how it was developed or engineered, but things will start to work a little better. And then as it gets larger and cheaper and the equipment becomes a little less specialized, then you'll see this move from research laboratories into academic and research hospitals and into the clinics. Um, and, you know, it, it okay. may go even farther, but you know, we will have to see where that comes. The thing I do want to say to people is when we talk about quantum medicine, we're talking about using quantum technology to improve the practice of medicine. We are not talking about giving someone a pill that is somehow quantum. It's not a quantum pharmaceutical, so to speak. Got it. Yep. It's about using quantum technology to improve the delivery and practice of medicine. And so when we started working uh, towards human biology, our first technologies were nitrogen vacancy centers in nanodiamonds, little pieces of diamond, tiny rocks, if you will, with a defect in them. And that system was obviously a quantum system. We, it was well known. It was well characterized. And then we're putting it into this sort of soft, squishy environment to learn about human biology. Um, but actually, recently, David Auchelon, Peter Moore, Aaron Esser Khan, Laura Gagliardi, uh, the four of them created a protein version of that. And, and mm. this just blows my mind. The ability to create a quantum sensor that is purely organic, that is built out of a protein, um, that is going to be transformative because now you're not, you don't have to put something that's, for lack of a better term, a rock into a cell uh, and then hope the cell behaves as it should. Uh, mm. To be able to engineer with specificity the position and placement of these quantum sensors and have them be organic, have them be protein-based sensors uh, is going to be really exciting. So I think in the coming months and year, we're going to see, uh, forgive me, a quantum leap in this technology that is going to allow us to start making measurements that we couldn't even dream of making uh, just a few months ago. Okay. Very interesting. As you start thinking through some of the bigger um, most vexing questions that, that you hope we start looking at in, in the next 10 years when it comes to quantum biology, where, where does your wish list go? Yeah. So, you know, there, there are a few emerging trends in biology and medicine that I think are very exciting. The ability to control and harness the immune system to address diseases, to include cancer and others. Um, and, then the ability to make measurements using quantum sensors to understand how the immune system 
is actually working and recognizing non-self and bringing those tools together so that we can have better drugs, better treatments for people. I think that's one where it's going to be really exciting. Another is neuroscience, where the right. quantum sensors are phenomenally good at measuring electric fields. And so this is how nerves communicate to one another. Now, we have other tools that do that very well right now, but it turns out there are a lot of membranes inside the cells that communicate in the same way. And we don't have the tools to look at how that's happening between different types of cells and within cells. And so I think this is going to open up areas of cellular uh, biology that we just have been completely unable to access before. Uh, and we'll learn about disease states. We'll learn about treatments. We'll be able to see what the drugs are doing. Uh, and I think that's going to open up uh, a broad new space for improving the delivery of human health care, making it a little more accurate, making a little a slightly better outcomes, making it a little bit cheaper. And so much of our economy is driven towards human health and preserving Absolutely. health. And if we can make that even a little bit better, I think we can have a huge economic impact with these technologies.